Our opening hymn is number 708, Holy God We Praise Thy Name, number 708. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And welcome to our Mass this morning. I'm delighted to be back with you. I've become quite a regular visitor down from Motherwell, Father Stephen, a friend of Father Michael's. And we're gathered today to listen to God's Word. We hear today about meals, and about one meal in particular. Uh, Luke is gospel that we're listening to this year throughout the year is full of meals and of course we gather today for a sacred meal in which the Lord feeds him with his very self with his body and blood and so we prepare for that our first way of preparing is by acknowledging with humility but also confidence in God's mercy our own sins and asking the God the forgiveness of God Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
first reading is a reading from the prophet Habakkuk. How long, Lord, am I to cry for help while you will not listen? To cry oppression in your ear and you will not save. Why do you set injustice before me? Why do you look on where there is tyranny, outrage and violence? This is all I see. All is contention and discord flourishes. Then the Lord answered and said, Write the vision down, inscribe it on tablets to be easily read. Since this vision is for its own time only, eager for its own fulfillment, it does not deceive. If it comes slowly, wait, for come it will without fail. See how he flags, he whose soul is not at rights, but the upright man will live by his faithfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, ring out your joy to the Lord, hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him giving thanks with songs. Let us hail the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Mass in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test, though they saw my work. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden reading from the second letter to, of St. Paul to Timothy. I am reminding you to fan into a flame the gift that God gave you when I laid my hands on you. God's gift was not a spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power and love and self-control. So you are never to be ashamed of witnessing to the Lord or ashamed of me for being his prisoner. What with me, bear the hardships for the sake of the good news relying on the power of God. Keep as your pattern the sound teaching you you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. You have been trusted to look after something precious. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand please for the gospel. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord. 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, were your faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Which of you with a servant plowing or minding sheep would say to him when he returned from the fields, come and have your meal immediately? Would he not be more likely to say, get my supper laid, make yourself tidy and wait on me while I eat and drink? You can eat and drink yourself afterwards. Must he be grateful to the servant for doing what he was told? So with you, when you have done all you have been told to do, say, we are merely servants. We have done more, no more than our duty. The Gospel of the Lord. So our great man, Father Michael, has finally reached Santiago de Compostela. Yes, he got there. <laughs> hey, I've seen the photographs and a picture of him proudly in front of the cathedral. I'm so pleased for him, as I'm sure you are. It's over a series of years. He, he did it the way the Spanish do it, in fact, which is to do it in sections. And he finally got there. So you'll be able to congratulate him when you see him. And one of the great things about the Camino experience is that... Um, usually in the little towns that you go to if you're, that you're staying in as you go from place to place there's usually at least one restaurant um, or more than one that offers a pilgrim menu so it's like cheap food uh, maybe 10 euros for a, a simple meal but it's a nice hearty meal and you get a wee glass of wine as well and the good thing is you end up just sitting talking to people that you've never met before people that are on the road and have maybe caught you up or you've caught them up a new group of people and you get to chat from to people from from all over it's really fantastic and it's a big part of the experience to sit down and to eat together Luke's gospel as I mentioned at the beginning of mass is a gospel full of meals you might think, for example, of the banquet that is uh, thrown for the prodigal son when he returns um, from the far country, and, and only Luke tells that story. Or you might think of, from a couple of weeks ago, the talking about if you go to a meal, put yourself in the lowest place so that you'll be brought up higher. Don't start with the, the upper place and then you get put down and you're embarrassed. And the people he's talking to are well aware of these kind of machinations as you try and get the best seat and, and the best dinner. And of course, the Last Supper itself that Luke tells beautifully in which the Lord gathers his disciples round him for the Passover feast. But today, we're also told about a meal, but it's a very different meal. It's a very simple meal. And the, the scripture scholar, Sylvester O'Flynn, a guy from Dublin, uh, or from Donegal, sorry, from a Franciscan, he, he wrote, and I, I remembered it so clearly, one of his books about the Gospels, he kind of goes on an imaginative journey when he talks about this uh, particular meal. So it's about somebody who comes home from working in the fields and his servant comes home and then the guy just basically shovels his dinner into his mouth and doesn't even say thank you to the servant who brought the meal. And so Flester as Flynn talks about this is like a bachelor. You know, there's no joy in the meal. There is just him feeding himself for the next day. And he describes the house as it might be, you know, there's not a woman's touch in it at all. There's no, you know, good, lovely fabrics there. You know, there's not a lot on the table itself. He talks about it's probably, you know, imagine the sort of rings of the coffee cup that's never been cleaned and all that kind of thing. And so he's saying essentially that some meals are joyful. They're, you know, we got lots of good food. There's great company. And others, and probably most meals, are just very normal, very humdrum from day to day. It's part of our routine, but we have to keep body and soul together, and all means, all meals count, and in all of those meals, we are nourished, whatever the circumstances. What it made me think of, and my final point I want to make is, that it's kind of what mass is like. Sylvester of Flynn talks about prayer in this, but I think it's also relevant for mass. Some masses are exciting, We've maybe got a big anniversary mass like I had during the summer there or we have a, a, a special mass for Easter or for Christmas or there's something really important that happens. But most masses from week to week are routine. 
we try our best, we've got beautiful music and we've got high quality of technical side and everyone is involved in the celebration of Mass. It's a beautiful parish, but every parish is the same. Sometimes it's just the weekly routine. But even if it doesn't seem as if Mass is, I'm getting much out of it, we're still being fed, we're still being nourished. And that's why it's so important for us to come week after week to receive from the Lord. And so a final little story which I like to tell my own students and I'd like to share with you. Remember two parishes ago, no three parishes ago, I was saying Mass one Saturday morning. And it was quite a quiet Mass, nothing special about it at all. But I looked out into the congregation and I saw three people who weren't normally there at Mass. And I knew a little bit of the backstory of each of them. One was a woman who had told me that the previous night was the first time in her whole life that she had ever slept on her own in a house. She was a middle-aged woman and she had been with her family, living, growing up, and then she got married. And her husband and her had just split up. And this was the first night she was on her own. And she was there looking for some comfort from the Mass and to feel part of that community. Another was a young man whose uh, wife had just lost a child to miscarriage. And he was there also, he was devastated and he was there, she was still in hospital and he was there praying for her and praying for some guidance for himself. And the third guy was uh, a man who I knew had very serious gambling problems and was there looking for the strength of the Eucharist and from prayer. And none of them knew each other and none of them knew why each of them was there. In fact, no one in the congregation knew why they were there. But I knew, and I knew that everyone else in the congregation had to be there for them. If the others hadn't turned up, there would have been no Mass and they wouldn't have been able to be comforted. So sometimes we come to Mass and we feel nourished. We're always nourished, but other times we're here to support others so that they can be nourished. That's what it means to be part of a community, whether from week to week we feel it, that's why we have to dig in that's why we have to have a good routine of coming to Mass for ourselves and for others because we are truly a community and truly a family. And when we come to the end of our own earthly life, having been faithful and being nourished, we pray that the Lord will say to us what he says to the servant in response to him saying, we are merely servants, we have done no more than our duty, that the Lord will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant, come to the riches which have been promised to you by your Father in heaven. Let's profess the faith which unites us in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. 
confident in the promises of a loving Father, we bring before our God all of our needs and intentions of this day. Defend the church from the temptation to seek influence with the rich and powerful. Inspire her ministers to preach the gospel of God's equal love for all. To stir the indifferent and give hope of the humble to the humble. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. We pray for those who are rich in this world. May we be generous in giving them their abundance for the relief of those in need. Open the way between the prosperous and the poor nations for material aid and better understanding that the whole world may live in peace. The Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. As we give thanks for the comforts of our life, keep us mindful of the needs of others. Give us grace to see and respond when we can give help to those near to us or those whose lives briefly touch our own. The Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. Look with compassion in the poor, the hungry and the homeless. Bring healing to the sick, especially those whose affliction makes them despised by others. Bless those who work for the relief of poverty here and in all the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the departed, especially for those who did not learn the lessons of a selfish love in this world. In the infinite mercy of God, may they too find peace with all who have suffered and come to rest. Help us so to live that we shall be received into eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And let's pause for a moment to bring to mind our own needs and intentions and present them to God for nourishment and strength. Lord, hear us. Almighty Father, we thank you for nourishing us, nourishing us with our daily bread, but also and above all with the gift of the Eucharist. May we always treasure that Eucharist. May we always seek to be nourished at your altar. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness of his hours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, granted we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So once again, just lovely to be here with you, and I hope to see you again. I'm sure I'll be getting a phone call sometime over the next few months, so I know that I'll, I'll see you another time. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Please join in with our final hymn, number 837.